Okay, this video is on potential energy diagrams. Uh, we're going to look at the features of a potential energy diagram and be able to answer questions based on that diagram. And I'd like to note that these are sometimes called reaction coordinate diagrams. And what they do is it's a representation of the chemical potential energy throughout a chemical reaction. And so what I have here is a picture of what that would look like. So here are the reactants. These are what you put into the reaction. Then you have an activated complex. Now the activated complex we've discussed before, but that is where all of the molecules are pretty much smacked together, where bonds are being broken and bonds are being formed. And it's a very highly unstable state uh, that doesn't last very long. And then it turns into products. And so products are just what's left over after the reaction occurs. And so here's a breakdown of that. Reactants, everything that's present in the beginning. Products, what's present at the end of the reaction. And activated complex is also called the transition state. And what I was saying before, it's a very high energy, very unstable we call it an intermediate state because it's an in-between state that's formed during the chemical reaction. Again, here's another example. We've got hydrogen and bromomethane coming together. Uh, when they're connected like this, everything smashed together is the transition state, and then it forms methanol and bromide. Again, the activated complex, very unstable. Uh, usually not shown in an equation, like I've shown you, reactant to activated complex to product, it's not shown because it's so highly unstable, it only lasts for a short amount of time. Okay, here is your basic potential energy diagram. Start out here with reactants. So I've got a blue dot and then two bonded red dots to represent reactants. Okay, those reactants go up this hill to become the activated complex where everything is smushed together. And remember, it's a high energy state. If you notice on this diagram, you've got potential energy on the left, and it's recording or measuring that potential energy. It's the highest one on here, highest point. And it looks like about 450 kilojoules. Then at the bottom, the end of this reaction progress, you have products. So something new is formed. Okay, we're going to be drawing some dashed lines to kind of help you figure out um, the energies for each thing. So we'll draw a dashed line where you see the reactants uh, from the energy of the activated complex, the top part of the hill. And that distance right there from reactants to the activated complex is how much energy is required to form an activated complex, to go from the reactants to the activated complex. We call that the activation energy. And so there we go, reactants to the activated complex. Another thing we'll need to note is this distance here uh, from the energy of the reactants right here, not making this line way over here, but really this whole dashed line represents the energy that the reactants have. So from the reactants to the energy where the products are at, and that would be another dashed line right here if we had it, um, that is our change in enthalpy, our heat change, our delta H, difference between the products and the reactants. Okay, we'll be looking at the difference between endothermic reactions on a potential energy diagram and an exothermic reaction. Exothermic releases energy. Remember that exothermic reactions will have a negative delta H so that the potential energy will decrease in order to become products. It has to give up energy, and so it releases that energy so you get the negative energy. Uh, for endothermic, it has to absorb energy, so in order for those reactants to become products, there is an addition of energy, and you'll see that on the graph as it goes up instead. So here's what those look like. We've got reactants 
here, products down there. So which one would this be? Would it be endothermic or exothermic? Well, the reactants have greater energy than the products. And so to go down from reactants to products to see the difference in energy, that would be going down. So that would be a negative delta H. Negative delta H should tell us that this is an exothermic reaction. Let's look at this picture over here. Uh, here we have reactants at a lower energy and products at a higher energy. We have to add energy to get those reactants to become products. Now I'm kind of skipping over this whole hill part and just looking at the difference between reactants and products when I'm talking about changes in enthalpy or delta H. So an increase in enthalpy or potential energy uh, is a positive change. And that okay. Here are some example questions that you might be asked. First one, is the forward reaction endothermic or exothermic? So we have to figure out where are the reactants, where are the products, and what direction is forward, and we'll talk about reverse later, but forward direction just means from left to right as normal, just like the arrow here indicates. Um, we know that the reactants are in the beginning, and they start out as reactants and end up as products. To figure out if it's endothermic or exothermic, we have to look at the difference between products and reactants, and that would be this section here. You notice to get from reactants to products in terms of the amount of energy that they have, it has to decrease, it has to go down. That is releasing energy or exothermic. Next question says, which letter represents the potential energy of the reactants in the forward direction? So I'm just looking for one of these letters, A, C, or D, um, that represents just the all the energy that the reactants have. So that would be from the bottom to the reactants. And the only letter that goes from the bottom to the reactants would be letter A. Okay, next question. Same. Uh, uh, which letter represents the potential energy of the products in the reverse direction? So now reverse would go from right to left, where we would have products on the left side and reactants on the right side. So it starts out here's reactants, goes up the hill, and forms products. So we want the one that represents the potential energy of the products. So now in the forward, this is the reactants. In the reverse, these are the products. So that would be this distance here from the bottom to where the products are at. So that is also A. Next question says, which letter represents the potential energy of the activated complex? Now that's all of the energy. We can consider this to be zero here, all the way to where the activated complex is at. So if we remember, that would be at the top of the hill, right there, the activated complex. And so the only line that represents from zero or the bottom to the top of the hill would be letter C. Okay, number five. Which letter represents the activation energy in the forward direction? Again, forward is from left to right. We want activation energy. So that is the difference between the reactants and the top of the hill. So here's my reactants. Here's my activated complex, the top of the hill. And so the only letter that goes from here to here would be B. Okay, number six, draw in a line to represent the heat of reaction, delta H. So that's going to be from reactants to products. So there's products over here. And that would be this direction. Okay. Now, even if I had reactants here, the reverse reaction, reactants here and products there, still the difference would be, for delta H, would still be this distance here, reactants products or products reactants. Number seven, what's the difference between delta H in the forward and reverse direction? So in the forward, delta H would be going from reactants to products, that would be exo-negative. 
and in the reverse, if this were reactants and this were products, delta H would be going up, that would be positive. So the values, if we had numbers here, those values would be equal, but in the forward direction, it's an exothermic reaction, and in the reverse, endothermic. Okay, please note, if the opposite were true, if the forward was endothermic, then the reverse would have to be exothermic. Okay, here's some more examples. Um, what's the activation energy for the reverse reaction? This time we have values, numbers. So the activation energy for the reverse would mean that reactants would be here instead of products, and products would be there. Um, that would mean it would go from the bottom here, from reactants, to the top of the hill, to the activated complex, this distance right here. And so if we figure out the numbers for these, we have 40 for the activated complex, 10 for the reactants, so that is 40 minus 10, or 30, and we'll say these are kilojoules. Oh, 30 would be my answer. Um, next one, what is the activation energy for the forward reaction? Okay, so these are going to be different. Let's see. Let's go back to where reactants are on the left and products are on the right. Here's a line to help us. And that would be this distance here from reactants to the top of the hill, the activated complex. And so now I'd have 40 for the activated complex, 30 for reactants, 40 minus 30, 10. Okay. Uh, part D, we need to know how do you speed up a reaction? We talked about that, or maybe that's our next lesson. Uh, catalysts. Catalysts are a way to speed up the reaction, and they do that by lowering the activation energy. And so that actually changes the potential energy diagram. And you'll see from this picture here is that this solid line is without a catalyst, and it takes more energy to get to the activated complex. Um, this dash line is with a catalyst, and so the activation energy is lot lower. It's about 40 kilojoules lower. Okay. Um, how do the features on the diagram change with the addition of a catalyst? So what happens to the reactants? Well, if you notice, reactants being oops, right here at 40, 4 with the catalyst and without the catalyst, there is no change in the reactants. How about the products? Well, the, react the products are here for the catalyst and without the catalyst, 120, so there's also no change in the products. How about delta H? Well, let's see, React delta H is the difference between the reactants and the products, products minus reactants, this distance here, and that seems to be exactly the same, so no change in delta H as well. Okay. How do the features on the diagram change with the addition of a catalyst? So we're still going on. I've got more on this list. Um, activation energy for the forward reaction. So that would be the difference between the reactants and the top of the hill. So this is without the catalyst. This is with the catalyst. So the activation energy is lowered, decreases. Uh, for potential energy for the activated complex, You'll notice that that is from here to here, the bottom at zero to the top for without the catalyst, here to here without the catalyst, so it's decreasing as well. How about the activation energy for the reverse reaction? Well, here's the activation energy without the catalyst and with the catalyst, so that is also a decrease. Okay, um, that's all I have for you. Hope that helped using potential energy diagrams.